<laughs> just for everyone's reference too, I will be circulating this recording around probably tomorrow morning. So if anyone wants to refer to anything, you're more than welcome to. Um, just with a couple housekeeping rules. If you can keep yourself on mute while you're not speaking, that'd be great. I know my dog always likes to bark right when I'm on a Zoom call and, you know, it happens. Um, camera's totally optional. We love seeing everyone's faces, but obviously you do whatever is comfortable for you. Um, let me see. And it is being recorded, which I already said, so we'll circulate the recording. And we'll also be able to circulate any contact information for Paige. So if you have follow-up questions or anything like that, we'll be able to send that over to you too. And you can contact her directly. Um, so just a quick little, some tidbits about Paige. Paige is our guest speaker today, Paige Burns, and she is the founder of Main Page Media. And we actually first met Paige when she was first starting her own small business. And she came to Boston Women's Market to uh, do an About Boston Women's Market video for us. And it was actually the very first Boston Women's Market video we ever had. And we still use it to this day. Like you can actually still find it on our About Boston Women's Market website. Um, so we love working with Paige and trying to find ways to partnership throughout the year like this. And she focuses on working with small businesses, both in the product realm and the service based realm. And one of the things we love that she does is she does this thing called a small business video, a uh, small business video business card, which is a great service. So she's always looking for ways to be really approachable for small business owners. And then she just has a wealth of expertise and knowledge about how you can really harness the power of video for your small business, even just with something with your iPhone. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Paige. And oh, and also if you have questions, we'll be, we'll be kind of pausing throughout um, naturally to do questions. If you don't want to unmute yourself, Please feel free to use the chat at any time also to pop any questions or even feedback or just personal comments about your experience about something we're talking about. And we'll talk about it then. But Paige, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Kara. I'm excited to be here with you all. And it's nice. We have a very, like, we have a small manageable group. And I think that this will be great that we can ask all the questions we need to ask. I am very receptive to having a conversation. I prefer that communication style than, than necessarily just reading through my, my PowerPoint presentation, which I will do, but feel free to chime in, ask questions. Um, and if it is something that you're concerned, like, oh, maybe she's going to get to it. It's fine. I'll just tell you, yeah, I'm going to get to that shortly. No worries. Um, or I'll answer in that moment and skip ahead. So really like take this time to make what you want of this. I'm just here to help and support and help you guys come up with ideas, um, you know, of what video you could be doing for your business, whether it's something like you're thinking about hiring a videographer, or you're thinking about creating your own content, or you're thinking about sending ideas to whoever's running your social media, or you're thinking about working with influencers. There's so many different ways that people can be using video. And I think when we think video, everyone's mind goes to a different place. And so I want to be able to offer advice in different spaces for you. So no question is off the table. Um, feel free to ask. If I don't know the answer, I will be honest with you and tell you I don't know the answer. Um, so I do have a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And it is, can we all see that? All right. It is on my um, second monitor. And so I may be looking over here. Um, and not at you guys, but I do have you on um, this screen pulled up. So if you do ask questions, I'll do my best to give you my attention. So the beginning of this presentation is using video to build relationships and save time. The reason I chose this as our topic for today is because I think that it, we, we do know, I think most people know, and it is the first place that you think of using video just to make sales, right? I want to use video to make sales. I want to use video to drive people to buy my product, to work with me, to check out my services, to check out my offers, um, to look at my space, whatever it may be, right? Because we're hoping that turns into revenue. And that's something that I think tends to be the first thing that people do think about. And we can talk about that today. But I also wanted to talk about how video can also help you build relationships and save time. These things are just as important when you're thinking about your small business and generating that revenue and scaling to the space that you want to scale to and making all of those sales. All of that matters. Um, that time saving, that relationship building piece is really important. Well, let's see if I can get myself to the next page. Here we go. So I'm going to begin um, in a way that I feel is only natural. Instead of me sitting here and telling you all about myself and my business, I'm going to play a video about it. So we'll see if... Uh, 
this plays and let me know if you can hear the sound. When you're able to not only you hear it, stuff, but also feel something, I mean, that's, that's the best part of the job. My name is Paige Burns, and I'm the founder and creative director of Name Page Media. We all know that people work with people that they know, like, and trust, and video is really the way to begin that relationship. You might hear of a business or think you know what they're doing, but then once you get inside, you learn a whole new story. I was really excited when I founded this company to be able to do that for other businesses, to kind of crack them open and show everyone really what they're made of. There's often a lot of fear around investing in video. What is this video gonna do for me? I'm not gonna be good on camera. What exactly are you gonna shoot? I want to just here and now put all those fears to ease for you that that's not your job to worry about, that's mine. Whether you know exactly what you want for video or you know you want some video but you're not exactly sure what you wanna create, I'm gonna work with you to help develop a video or videos that are going to achieve the goals that you're looking for. Every video we produce is custom to the client. We're really first and foremost focused on strategy. From there, we do everything you expect of a video production company, of course. Lights, cameras, action, the whole thing. We edit, we animate if needed, and then we deliver the video for you. It's important to us that we are able to coach you and guide you and be a resource to you. I tell all of my clients, there's no end date to when you can ask me questions. We feel successful when you feel successful. When we're able to help you spread your mission, when we're able to help you tell your story in a way that you were just maybe fighting with, being able to actualize these dreams, these goals, these visions that you've had is really what drives us. And so if your business is making an impact and you're looking for new ways to showcase that to the world, head on over to mainpagemedia.com slash get started. I'm looking forward to creating with you. And that is me. <laughs> so that's what the, your introduction to me, as I'm sure you can see through a lot of the shots in that video, we work with clients anywhere from you saw us with Hippie Pilgrim Garlic Salt, where it's artists and garlic salts, to we have a shot at Boston Public Schools. It's really variable. Um, and I've, I've been fortunate enough over the five years that I've had this business um, to be able to touch a lot of different industries. So once again, that's why I said, if you guys want to drop in the chat or let me know if you didn't let me know before what, what you actually do, I would love to be able to speak directly to your business and be able to give you that advice. So I am going to begin here with uh, the importance of video of in your business. So if you didn't come here already knowing that video is important, I assume you did because you signed up for this webinar. Um, I'm going to give you some of the latest statistics that are really going to, going to prove the value of video for your business. These stats are not necessarily based on whether the video is created in-house with an agency on an iPhone, on a nice camera. It's pretty agnostic to business owners who have reported saying that they use video to market for their business. So 80%, 87% of video marketers, so that's anyone who is using video to market, um, says videos directly increase sales. 82% of people have been convinced to buy a product or service by watching a video, and 90% of marketers say video marketing has given them a good return on investment. So this goes back to what I was saying in the beginning, when the one of the first things we think about, one of the like juiciest, sexiest things you think about is like, yeah, it's going to help me make sales, right? <laughs> like that's what people get excited about. Um, so there's inherent value in this. But once again, today we're talking about relationship building and time saving. And so I wanted to dig into that a little bit here. So how can video save you time and build relationships? I have three kind of key points here that I do want to talk about. The first one is my favorite. It's building that no like, and trust factor. If that's something you've heard about before, um, it's likely I would say raise your hand, but I can't see everyone. <laughs> so if that's something you've heard about before, awesome. If it's not, um, I think it is something really valuable to live by when you're thinking about relationship building in terms of building your business. So people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. People want to work with people they know, like, and trust. Think about your own relationships and the people you've worked with, whether that's your hairstylist, your plumber, who do you bring back? You bring back the person who didn't do a botch job on that haircut, right? You bring back the plumber that you trust because, you know, Maybe your family has referred him to you, maybe because he explains things to you and builds that trust for you or she, I'm sorry, just assumed a plumber was a man. And really that no like and trust factor is inherent in buying decisions we make, right? And so video can really help build relationships in that way when you, the business owner, especially because everyone here is a small business owner, you are the face of your brand. I'm making assumptions. I don't exactly know 
if everyone's the face of their brand. But if you're a small business owner and you are at markets like the Boston Women's Market, you are there, you are the face of your brand. And there's this inherent factor of if people have seen you, even just on your Instagram stories in videos you've made on reels on TikTok, but they're like, oh, I think the owner of this brand is so fun, so relatable, so funny. And they want to approach you. They want to talk to you. They want to learn more about what you have to offer. And so video is a good way to do that in a way that's that you can multiply in a way that's scalable in a way that if you're doing this online, when someone shows up to a market or to your brick and mortar or to that sales meeting with you, they already have a little bit of a sense of who you are and they've already started to know and like and trust you. The trust one, um, it, there's potential, there's question around that, right? Know and like, you're like, yeah, sure, vibes. There, It's in video, it's on the internet, sure. The trust factor, I do think that there's, there's a lot that can go into that. One is being trustworthy in your content, being authentic and honest with the content that you're putting out there. Um, even just this morning, I, I was scrolling through, there's an ice cream shop in Somerville that was talking, if anyone follows Honeycomb Creamery, I've literally never been there and I just enjoy following them. Um, and they were talking about how they don't do um, samples, but they don't do samples. And then they explained why. And they had a whole series in their stories about why they don't do samples. And they're building that trust factor. It's like, hey, we're going to be transparent with you. Frankly, we're a small business. It, this is how much space we have to store the ice cream that we make in house. This is how much like gets used when we are giving samples. We want to support you. And if you don't like your ice cream, we'll give you a new one. But like the samples thing is just not working for us right now. And I love that. It's so authentic and real. And then it, then it gets me to a point where I feel like I trust them more, right? That's the trust factor. It's like, oh, it's not like they just don't want to give me samples because they're being greedy. It's like, it literally doesn't make sense because they're a small business and they're making everything in house and they only have so much space to store the ice cream. So if they run out faster, they don't have backups, right? Like you're building that no like, and trust factor in so many different ways with the content that you're putting out there, whether, whether it's video or, or um, other content. But I do think that that's really, really crucial. And video is a great way for people to get a sense of your vibe, people to get a sense of like what your energy is and if they relate to it, right? So that's my next point there is it's the closest thing to meeting people in real life. I always like to say that video is a way to duplicate yourself. That video I showed you about myself and my brand at the beginning of this is my video brand story, um, formerly known as the video business card. Um, and that video really shows who I am and what I'm about and what my business is about, right? And I can have that, I have that at the bottom of my email signature. So anyone that reaches out to me, anyone I talk with, they have the opportunity to click it and watch it. It's on my website, it's on pinned on my socials so that I am not constantly telling people, here's where I am and what I do and blah, 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 right? I don't have to always do that. Of course, I still have to do that. Like I'm a person in society, but I don't have to always do that. I can be, you know, out shopping for groceries and someone is on their phone getting to know me. So you're duplicating yourself, right? You don't always have to have that face-to-face -face relationship. That's really important when you're trying to develop relationships, not only with buyers, but maybe with new vendors, partners that you want to work with, right? Is there another business you want to partner with? And they're trying to learn about you. Um, if you're trying to wholesale your products, okay, great. So who is that? Who is that buyer? Do they want to know, you know, are they a shop that only sells women owned goods from minorities. And they want to know, like, do you actually stand for that? Or do you never show up and not identify in any way? And you're just like, here's a product, right? So it's really the closest thing that to meeting people in real life, which can really help you build those relationships. And of course, save you time. You just, you don't have to have as many and as many conversations. And that's the next thing I have here is people can get to know you and your brand before that email, that DM, that sales call. They, you, it weeds out, and I will tell you this from doing it, it weeds out so much of that minutia in conversation that you have to have with people that want to work with you, where they're like, before I had a lot of content about myself out there, I'd get these messages. Oh, do you do these types of videos? Do you do those types of videos? Oh, do you do that? Like, do you film with a, I mean, this is not a question I've ever gotten, but like, do you film with an iPhone? Um, I know people that have gotten that question before. And it's like, the more you're putting out there and answering for people before they have to ask it, the questions that you get are going to be a higher quality. And it's going to save you time to go into that conversation. That's going to bring us back to that thing that we as business owners have to be focused on, which is money.
It's the only way we can stay afloat. And it brings you back to, great, we're going to get that sale. We're going to get that partnership. We're going to get that event in our space. And, and that all then goes together with the impact that we want to be making in whatever way we want to be making an impact on the world. And if that is literally just to be financially secure women, that is fucking amazing. Uh, forgive my French. So really like think about all the time that you're spending answering the same questions over and over again. Think about all the time that you're spending in those DMs, right? And how can you optimize that? What is the content you can be putting out there? And that's something I do want. If we want to brainstorm any of this together, we absolutely can do together. Like what does that content look like? I have a few ideas for you here. So time-saving videos you can create. These also, of course, help build those relationships. Um, I just want you all to walk away here thinking about the time and relationships when you are creating your content and not just feeling like, oh, I just, I need to get a, a, a shot of my shop. Like, yeah, definitely. But like, what else? When you're running out of ideas where you're like, I can't just keep showing shots of my shop or of my product. I can't just always show the same thing over and over again. Think about these things. How can I build better relationships with people, right? What are the things people are asking me all the time that I can save time with? Start thinking that way as well. It helps you generate those ideas. So time-saving videos, you can create the video brand story. That's my bread and butter. That is what I do for small business owners. That is the video you saw of me at the beginning. It's that two-minute video where we cover the who, why, what, and how of your business. That works really well if you are a service provider or you are the face of your brand and you have a story to tell behind your brand, right? You want people to connect with the products that you have or the service that you provide. So you saw mine. That was for a service. I've worked with clients who have products who have done that video as well. Um, you maybe have noticed the clips from Hippie Pilgrim Garlic Salt. She wanted to tell a story about how she got started and she hand peels all of the garlic. She was like, I want people to know the love and care that goes into this product we're making. And I want them to know how to use it. She's like, my audience is, isn't people. A lot of people say, oh, well, this product isn't for me because... I, I don't, I don't like to cook. She was like, I want people to know that this is a product for people who don't like to cook, which to be completely honest, not to just like hype up her brand. It's so true. Um, cause I use it now and I don't like to cook and it's like, just, you have a good seasoning and all of a sudden, oh my God, I'm great at cooking. My food's amazing. Um, but she wanted people to know that, right? So if you have something that it's, you have a story to tell, you have certain people you want to reach, you have things you want to debunk. You have things where you're like, people just don't understand what this is or what this stands for or how to use it. Um, that's kind of your, your umbrella video. Customer testimonials are also extremely important. And this is something that you can do in a variety of ways. You can hire a videographer to film those for you and have them be all crispy and polished. You can ask your best clients to send you a selfie video. That social proof is so, so crucial because that goes back to that trust, right? If other people are singing your praises, talking about how much they love what you do, how much they love your product, how much they love your service, what the experience has been like working with you. People who watch that are going to say, oh, so it's not just her saying how great she is, right? Which we should all toot our own freaking horns, but it's not just this business owner talking about how great their business is. There's also, I'm hearing from people who are like me. What I like to tell people, if you are thinking about gathering those video testimonials is to not just say, so what, what do you like about the product? What do you like about the service is to really ask, okay, what was the position you were in before you decided to, to work with us? Right? So Christina, you sell tea. What were you looking for when, when, you know, you ask someone this, what were you looking for in a tea? Like what, did you even drink tea before? Where were you at? And someone might say, oh, I was actually, I was, I was trying to quit coffee. Um, and so I was getting into teas, but I wasn't finding anything that, that I really liked. I wasn't finding anything. I really wanted to get something local. I was kind of nervous about what was in the teas. If I didn't know who was making it, whatever it is. Right. And then it's like, great. So then when you first found our teas, how did you feel? Oh my God, I tasted these teas. It like, it became part of my daily routine. I just was like, it finally found the right thing for me. And it's like, great. Who are you now? I've quit coffee. I'm a whole new person. I feel amazing. What And it, it, this doesn't have to be the story that you're going for, right? But it's like, you want to take them through that journey. Who were you before? What was that first experience like? Who are you today? People want to connect on that personal level because it's so easy to just get a customer testimonial and have someone say, this tea is my favorite tea. I love it. It's so tasty. I love a warm cup of it. Great. That's literally every tea. 
right? But talking about someone saying, maybe Christina helped me find the right one, right? Or she, I, I finally learned loose leaf tea. Like I was always using tea bags. I finally learned how to do that and how to, you know what I mean? Have this ritual, whatever it is. Um, you want to get this, these stories from people. Storytelling is so, so powerful. Um, a positive affirmation and a five-star review is great, but when you can really develop a story around it, that's really key. Um, product demos with FAQs. So I say this because I don't want you to say, here's our product and here's how to use it. And to answer all your FAQs, it's not that it's just keeping those in mind. So if someone's always saying, you know, I'm going to take a look. At that. Thank you. I just saw there was a thing in the chat. Thank you for whoever left my video. Um, <laughs> I was just checking to see if anyone else told me what, what their, what their business is. Um, but when we talk about Haley with having a floral business, right. And maybe you want to show people, hey, like when you get these flowers, here's how to take care of them, right? And you're showing that demo of how to how to keep your pre-cut flowers alive longer, which frankly, I would love to learn um, because my plants always die really fast. Um, but, but giving them those those tips where it's like, once you take these home, here's how to take care of them. Here's what you can do. Just think about those things that people are asking you all the time. That's what you should be incorporating into your product demo. It's not just like, when you get your flowers from us, bring it home and put it in a vase. It's like, okay, duh. Like, what do people actually want to know, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Product demos are huge right now. Product demos, explainer videos. Um, I've been looking more and more into the statistics of what's trending. Um, and those are some of the, I do not quote me on these stats, but the, some of the most watched videos right now, people are using YouTube as a search engine. So they're looking for like how to make loose leaf tea, right? They're looking for how to create a video with your iPhone. They're looking for how to get involved in women's markets, right? Like they're looking to figure out like, where do I get started? And then they're looking for videos. Um, a lot of consumer data has shown that people prefer to watch a video than to read a blog post about something. Um, so that's a great way to really get in there with people finding you. And then the last one that I want to talk about is video emails. This is like one of my favorite little secret weapons. Um, so I'm going to go into this on the next slide because I'll give you some tools to explain what that means. So if anyone has used Vidyard or Loom before, drop in the chat. Let me know if this is something you've ever tapped into. Um, there's others like Boomerang, Soapbox, but these are tools for video emails. And so you can actually, I use Vidyard myself um, solely because I used to use Loom and then it was it, there was a bug one day and I got frustrated and Vidyard never gave me a bug. So Vidyard is my first, uh, like Loom just wouldn't record one day. Um, but I know a lot of people who really love Loom. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that it's bad, but Vidyard hasn't given me any issues. And these, all, I, I will go into the tools on here, but these are all service, all tools that have like a freemium offer. Um, so there's like a free version. You, Loom and I use Soapbox, but they heard they're no longer maintaining the service. Do you mean Soapbox? I feel like it didn't, it, Loom got more popular than Soapbox. And yeah, maybe actually, that's why. A boss of Ms. Margaret Vendor used to work for Soapbox and she told me that they were kind it was like their ugly stepchild and they were kind of just letting it, letting it die. go. <laughs> so I'm going to be converting probably to Loom or Vidyard because I use it a lot for tutorials. Yeah. And it's so easy. It's a Chrome, either one of them, they work very similarly. So Chrome plugin, there are, and when I say freemium, it's like, that means there's a free option and there's a premium option. So you don't have to pay for it. I don't pay for Vidyard and I use it all the time. Um, you get 25 videos and frankly, I just delete the old ones when I need new ones. <laughs> I use it to work with my editors sometimes to give them feedback on something. I use it with my clients to show them how to use our client portal. Um, I sometimes use it just to, someone asks me like a complicated question in an email. Sometimes I just turn on that video and answer them by a video or loom. And then you can embed that video right into your email. What's great about this and what a, a fun way to use these is if you're trying to make a connection and build a relationship with someone that maybe you've never reached out to before. You're like, oh, I really want my products to be in this store. Like introduce yourself with a video. No one's doing that. No one else is doing that. People are sending over, hey, here's our packet of materials. It shows what all our products are. Here's what our cop pricing is, blah, blah, blah. I would love to work with you. Sure, send all that, but send a video. Like show your face and be like, Hey, Sarah, I'm pretending Sarah owns the store. Hey, Sarah, I love your store so much. I've been in there so many times. It would be a dream of mine to have my products in your store, blah, blah, blah. Then talk about your products. Keep it short and sweet, but have someone spend, you know, two minutes with you. And it's personalized. It's one-to-one. -one. It takes no time. 
if on your webcam, it's literally this right here. Um, so I think just think it's a really awesome way. And with Vidyard and Loom, they will tell you when people have watched it. So you can know if someone's actually watched your video and it will tell you the percentage of the video they watched. So if you're wondering, oh, did that store owner ever get my email? It's like, well, it'll tell you, you'll know. And then it gives them the option to send a video back if they want to. So I think it's a really cool way to kind of cut through the noise um, and a really great relationship builder if there's some kind of partnership you're trying to build um, and you want them to see like, I'm really cool to work with. Like, let's work together um, to at least start that conversation, right? couple of other tools I just wanted to talk about since I was putting Vidyard and Loom here, I figured I'd give you an, a few other tools as well, because I do want you to be able to walk away from this today if you want to create your own content to like, you're like, where do I begin? Obviously, um, your smartphone, assuming that all of you have a smartphone, it being 2024, is a great camera. I don't care what model phone you have. Your smartphone is a great camera. It is, I, I say this all the time, but like your your smartphone is so smart when it comes to to, to image quality. Like you don't have to think about Oh, is it going to be too bright? Or, oh, is it going to be too dark? Like your phone is solving all of it. It's like nothing, We all the things that we have to fix in our cinema cameras, like your phone is like on it, got it. So use your phones. I People ask me all the time, they're like, what camera should I go out and buy if I want to start making videos? I'm like a tripod for your phone. That would be great. The back facing camera of your phone is always going to be higher quality than the front facing camera on your phone. Front facing cameras in every phone has been designed for like FaceTime, Snapchat, selfies, whatever. Um, this is made for content creation. So if you can get a tripod for your phone and actually use the back facing camera, low ring light, you're golden. Um, editing softwares that I'm going to recommend. CapCut is a great platform on your phone. It's a free app on your phone. Um, I used it to cut together a reel this morning, like literally this morning. And I have professional video software and I was like, this is easier. It was some behind the scenes from a shoot I was on. I could just take the, the phone video, plug it right in there. Very user-friendly. Um, and I will also say Canva is, if you're already using Canva for graphics and stuff, you can edit videos right in there. And it has some really user-friendly tools a few quirks, but um, like I said before, YouTube is a great search engine and can teach you exactly how to do all those things. I have, I was editing something in Canva one time because I think a client had sent me something existing and I was like, okay, let me just like change this a little bit and then I'll, I'll export it and use it in my editing software. And I had to look up a test a tutorial. I was like, how do I change the timing on this? So there's, there's a, some quirks some quirks editing in Canva, but if you're already using it and you're familiar with it, I do think it's a great tool um, to create some, to edit some videos that you need to edit um, and create some content for yourself. Another one I want to mention is Descript. If anyone's familiar with Descript, drop it in the chat, let me know. Descript is a newer, um, a newer software. And when I say newer, it's in the last probably like two years, but it's becoming more and more popular. What Descript does, and they also have a, a free option um, and then the paid version is like $30 a month. Um, you've used a script for captions. Amazing. Yeah. That's what I started using it for. It was for captions, but in Descript, you can upload your videos and it will actually transcribe everything. And the AI transcription in there is actually very good. You can transcribe everything in Descript, and then you can literally just delete the text in the transcript and it will edit the video for you. It's magical, magical. So if you are do a talking video and something, and you're like, oh, I messed up so many times. Great. Just delete out the stuff you messed up. Amazing. You can add in transitions in there. You can adjust the color in there. They have some crazy AI things in there for like cleaning up your audio. Um, I, I threw some audio in there the other day to see how it would do. And it actually did an okay job um, of cleaning up some background noise that I didn't want. Um, you It even has that thing. And maybe you've all seen this. I keep seeing the ads for where if your eyes are over here, it can actually make your eyes look like they were forward. I have not tried that out. I haven't tried it out, but it's in Descript. It's the AI. Um, but I will say that when it comes to, it is creepy. I agree. Um, when it comes to a really user-friendly video editor, especially if you're doing something like Maybe you, maybe you hop on a Zoom call and get that client testimonial from someone, right? Sometimes it's helpful to kind of ask leading questions and then you want to cut out all your stuff and maybe cut out the fluff of what they said. It's a really easy way to do it because you're actually just looking at the transcript and deleting the stuff you don't want. And then you have a video and there's a button you can press that just deletes filler words. So all the ums and ahs, you literally just gone, all gone. It's amazing. AI is amazing. Um, and that's the only time I'm going to talk about AI today, unless somebody asks a specific question. Um, <laughs> because that's the only tool I really use, except for like the occasional jet chat GPT. Um, and then finally, Upwork is just, I'm going to recommend Upwork is out there for you. It is available for you. Um, 
if you create your own videos and you're like, bitch, I don't want to use CapCut or Descript or Canva. I don't want to edit my own videos. Great. You can find someone to edit them for you on Upwork. There's a lot of talent out there. Um, and I think that that's just a lot of times when people are trying to create their own video content, the biggest hang up that they get to is like, but then the editing. And I've been sitting trying to edit. I hear this from people all the time where they're like, oh, I have all this respect for what you do. I've been trying to make this one video all morning. And they're just like so hung up in it. And then they never want to do it again. Um, editing is, is certainly, it's, it's beast. It's a task. It's something that needs to be learned just like every craft out there. So these are tools that I would recommend, or if you want to outsource it, someone, a freelancer on Upwork would probably be your best bet. I would advise for a lot of small business owners, like don't go to someone like me or a production company that's going to have more expenses and overheads that they're going to charge you more for editing. Um, not to like cannibalize my own work, but like if you're just like, I know what this video is and I just need someone to cut it up and put it on YouTube for me, like that's the way to go. In that same vein, we can talk about when to hire a professional versus when to go DIY. And I'm just going to look ahead a little bit. Okay. I only have two more slides because um, I do want to give time for everyone to ask questions. When to hire a professional versus when to do it yourself. This is my advice. As a professional, um, I am not here to tell you that you should always hire a professional. I think that there are many times where you really don't need to. Um, so this is a chart that, that I've kind of put together. Professional, usually people are coming to me like they're launching a new website, right? Like they've been using that website. They maybe made themselves on Wix or Squarespace with a template for like a couple of years. And then you finally, you hired someone to do it and make it beautiful. And you got your brand photography and all that, right? When you're ready to like level that up, that might be the time to be like, and I'm going to hire someone. I want to have this perceived value. That is a big thing, right? The high quality video is going to give you a higher perceived value um, when you're at that point. That does not mean that the DIY video is going to cheapen your brand. Um, but when everything else is looking stunning and you're just like, I want this to be in the right place. Also, like this is an investment when you invest in a new website. You want that website to last you years, right? With You'll do some updates, but the bones are going to stay the same. We want the video content that lives on our clients' websites to be stuff that's going to last them years and really just be a staple of their business. Um, sometimes a new product launch, that can go either way, right? Um, new product launch, sometimes people really want professional video for that because they're trying to make a big splash. They want to get noticed. Um large scale training videos. So if you have a lot of employees that you need to train um, and you want to make sure that it's just like, it's done completely right, it's cleaned out. We have on the other side of this small, smaller training process, just like Kara said, like tutorials and things that you're walking people through, use Loom, use Soapbox, like you don't need that. But if you're if you're looking at like, oh, this I, I was talking to this other business owner and they were hiring people for their training videos, that might be that it's, you know, they're also trying to, they have a lot of employees they're working with or they have a lot of, clients at scale, or they have a product that is just like really hard to use for some reason. And you need to walk through the setup of it. Right. And it's like, this is going out to a lot of our client base and a lot of our customers. Um, I, I don't believe that that's necessarily anyone here right now that probably needs that again, don't necessarily know everyone's business, but, um, those large scale training videos might then be when you hire. Right. And then we have the no time versus you have the time. That's a big one. If if you're like, this isn't actually going out to a huge audience, but I want this video done or this product launch, I want people to know about, but like I, I, I it could be DIY or done by someone else, but I literally don't have time to do it myself. Great. Hire a professional, right? That's the time to hire a professional. If you don't have the time to it, delegate, delegate, delegate. We all know this about our businesses. If there's something that you are not the best at, and you don't have the time to learn it and do it yourself, it's time to hire out. The flip side of that is if you do have the time and you also don't have the budget, that's when you DIY, right? Um, and so we have that up here as well with, with low budget. If you just don't have the budget to do it with a professional, even if you want to, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, right? It doesn't mean that like, if you're like, oh, it would be so great to have a video for my new product launch, but I just can't afford it. it, it what's worse, not putting out there anything at all? Like that's a worse situation, I believe, than unless you create something that's totally horrible and destroys your brand, which odds are you're not going to do that. Um, you should still be creating it yourself. And then um, the last one we have similarly is the, a new brand or business launch. That's kind of the same as when people are like really in that refresh phase, right? Or that restarting phase that tends to sometimes be a time when when you are hiring a professional um, DIY in the moment content opportunities. Um, 
I actually took this chart from a presentation I did with a with a brand photographer and just kept it in this presentation um, because we were talking about she is a brand photographer and she does family photography. And her whole thing is like, you wouldn't stop taking pictures of your children just because you don't have the professional photographer on site, right? You wouldn't just not take those cute pictures in your living room. So don't stop yourself from taking videos behind the scenes at your events or on your phone. I create videos on my phone and I have nice cameras, right? Um, I just pop open my selfie mode and put on a bunch of videos in my stories literally today. Like it does, it's an in the moment thing where I'm like, hey, I was thinking this and I wanted to share this with my audience and here's this offer that I have going on and click here to learn about it and whatever. I don't need the full polished thing. Frankly, once they click on the thing and then go to my website, there is a polished video for them to learn about things. Um, but you don't need to always have like, oh, I just can't do it because I can't afford it or I don't have the time or whatever that is. So those are just some kind of things to think about because I do get that question a lot. When should I hire? When should I do it myself? Ultimately, it kind of comes down to like, do you have the budget? Do you have the time? What is the use case of this? I have had people come to me and say, I want to do a video about this, 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 and this. And then they're like, oh, but my, my budget's really low. And I'm like, okay, well, frankly, this third video you mentioned, you don't need to hire me for, right? If you don't have the budget, you don't need me for this one because it's only going to last six months until that one event happens and it's over. Now, if a big brand comes to me and says that, and they're like, we're not going to do this ourselves. We don't have time for this. It's like, cool, six months time, like shelf life for it. We'll get it done, right? Because you don't have time to do it and you want to outsource it. So just different ways of thinking when it comes to, to that stuff. And if anyone has questions about that, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, and then finally, just tips on if you are going to hire a professional. Um, few questions that, that I like to propose to people. One is, do you need a technician or do you need a strategist? I say this because going back to that Upwork comment, right? Do you need someone who just has technical skills and can cut that video together for you and, you know, get it ready for you to post on social or on your YouTube or what, what have it have you, or do you need someone to help you figure out what are those content ideas? Where should I be filming them? What should I be saying? What is the messaging going to be? Do you need a true partner, someone who's going to help you strategize and do that full service production with you? Um, ask yourself that, right? Because you don't always need to have someone like myself in my company who's going to work through that whole process with you, especially say you have, you know, you're speaking at a, a small conference or something, right? And you're like, oh, I really want to get video of me on stage. Well, you probably don't need someone like me to do that. You need, you know, a technician, someone who has good technical skills to just come and record you, right? You don't need to have me like be like, okay, what's the use case of this? Where is it going to go? What are you going to do with it? How do we want to edit it? What types of content do we want to turn it into? Um, if you're like, no, I really just want to have it like in the can, in the archives so that like I can maybe do something with it later, then that's a technician. If you're like, I want to get more speaking gigs, I want to create a speaker reel, then you come to someone like myself. Um, if you are trying to work with a production company or a strategist, the things that I always tell people is like, are they asking you questions? I say this because I have had clients and this is not to be like, I'm the best option because there's so many freaking talented video people in this city alone, um, that are amazing. But I have had clients come to me and say they worked with someone in the past and they didn't get what they wanted. Ultimately, usually you can kind of figure out, okay, the reason that it didn't happen was because they weren't asking about their goals. They weren't asking enough questions, right? They weren't really figuring out what are you trying to do with this video? It was more like they say, I want this. And they're like, great, I'll make it happen. Um, really trying to make sure that someone understands your vision and your goals. Um, what does their pre-production process look like? So someone that you're you know, paying to work with, are they asking you questions ahead of time? The same kind of thing. What questions are they asking? What work are they doing with you ahead of time to figure out your messaging? Uh, what research are they doing? Or are they just showing up on shoot day, right? Um, I have this in here. Are they a yes person? Um, I do say this because I don't think that every professional you work with should be a yes person. Um, I personally know that I love when I hire someone to do something for my business. If I'm like, oh, I kind of want it to look like this. And they say to me, well, actually, it would be better if we did it like that. And here's why. And pointing me in the right direction. I'm hiring you because you are an expert at what you do, right? So if someone is just yesing you the whole way through, that's not an advisor. Now you might have amazing ideas and they just have, you know, they just say yes to you, but try to get a sense for that because I do think that that's really helpful. Um, and then finally, the obvious is, do you like their work? Always look at people's work before you work with them. I've also had this problem before where people have come to me and said, oh, I worked with someone in the past and I really didn't like what their videos looked like. And I'm like, did, did you look at their other videos? Because <laughs> that's kind of 
their whole thing right that's like saying I bought a painting and I didn't I didn't like the artwork it's like okay did you like that artist's style to begin with or were you just like you're an artist paint me a portrait um so obviously something to really just make sure, make sure you look at portfolios, make sure you look at the people you're working with. Even if it is something like you're going on Upwork to hire an editor for that YouTube series you now want to create because I've inspired you. Um, look at what they've done before or ask them, say, hey, can you send me some videos you've done before? Make sure it feels right for you. Um, we don't want to be wasting your time um, by trying to do a million revisions with someone or your money, trying to, you know, keep paying for it to be fixed. And you don't want to waste, waste their time either. Um, you know, if you hire someone and then you don't like it, it's like, well, that was a waste for everyone. At least that's, that's my philosophy. Like, I don't, I don't think it's worth, you know, yeah, sure. They might get paid, but like they, for what, there was no, there was no win in the end for anyone there. Um, so yeah, make sure you like their work. That's it. This is my contact information. Um, if you want to download my guide for the small business owner's guide to effective video for connection and conversion, feel free to scan this QR code and download. Um, this is also all my contact information. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And I am here to, for like our last 15 minutes or so, open the floor for q and I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so I think more in the beginning of the presentation, we were talking about building authenticity with videos. And I also think that's connected to like, obviously kind of position yourself as kind of like an authority figure within your industry, like as an expert, but I know like me included, like, I don't necessarily like putting myself on camera. Like, I don't feel necessarily comfortable, like always being the face, even though you kind of have to be like, you have to do it. Um, but a lot of people don't, particularly small business owners. They're like, I just read rather show my product. Like, could you like talk about, I guess, some of the pros and cons of, you know, putting yourself on video and any kind of tips you have to kind of like get over that hesitation or fear of like being that authentic person that people can turn to and like being the face. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's something that people ask me all the time. I think that there are very few people that are immediately comfortable being on camera, um, especially if you're not an extrovert. I am not an extrovert. Um, <laughs> and so I can say this from experience. And and when I started putting myself on video, I really did not enjoy it. Um, I was like, this is so uncomfortable. Now I'm like, whatever, it's just a video. Who cares? Like people get my vibe. They get me now. But that's, I mean, really that what I just said there is kind of the name of the game. The more you do it, the less uncomfortable it is. I usually tell people a few good ways to kind of like dip your feet in and get started. Um, one is Instagram stories. I do really believe that they expire in 24 hours. Like this is a good way to like practice and test yourself. Like, can I live with this video being up for 24 hours? Can I feel okay about it? And see what kind of responses you get. When I first started this business, I frankly had no idea what I was doing. I was like, what am I? Like I would get up every morning and sit at a desk and I was like, I don't have a nine to five job anymore. Like what am I supposed to do today? And so I kind of started documenting a little bit of that, um, being like, okay, today I like set up my website and I'm still working on deciding what videos are going on and kind of just telling people what I was doing. And I was like, oh, this, this is so, this is so cringy. This is so weird. Like I, I, but I'm just trying to kind of be out there and remind people that I have this business. And the feedback I got from people was, I love following along. I'm loving seeing your videos. I'm loving hearing about what you're working on. And then I was like, oh, Okay. I'm not, no one's coming to me and saying, this is super cringy page. Like those people just aren't watching it. Um, so that, that affirmation and we don't always need exterior, you know, affirmation, but it is helpful to just get it out there and be like, Oh, nothing bad happens. Okay, cool. And more often than not, you're probably going to get some kind of positive response. Um, so Instagram stories is a great one. If even that makes you think like, I'm not going to show you like behind the scenes of me, you know, doing my work today and my Instagram stories and talk about it. That's not me. I'm not an influencer. I'm still so uncomfortable with this. Try it just in your, in your phone. Like you don't have to post it, but just try it. Like film yourself. Even if you're like, I still feel weird about this. Like I, I, I tell people this, like you can narrate while you're folding the laundry, just like put your phone up and be like, okay, like now I'm folding my socks and like, just start doing it. Cause it feels really weird to talk at your phone, to talk at your camera, to talk at this object when there's no audience around, you have to kind of like get over that piece. Like it does feel strange. Of course it does. Um, but if you think back to like 
that very first market you ever did or that very first like sales meeting you ever had with a potential buyer or that very first, you know, time you told someone you had, that felt weird too, right? That felt weird too. The very first time you told someone, oh, I have a business now, like all of that feels weird. And then it just starts to become second nature and become more comfortable. And I wish I had better advice than that, than like, it's, it's uncomfortable until it's more comfortable, but it really is. And I think if you can start with things that are a little low stakes, it gets easier. Yeah, that's great. That's so true. I mean, it is like, it's so weird. Like, particularly if, if like, I know sometimes people ask um, us to like pre-record things on our phone and send it to them. And it feels really weird, like talking to yourself on a phone for sure. It's, it's it, something to get over. It feels really, really weird. And even like I personally, like I will even feel weird if I can, my, my partner works from home all day. He's upstairs all day. And like, I'm like filming an Instagram story and I'm like, I don't want him to like walk through and hear me. <laughs> like, you just don't want him to hear, like hear that I'm doing this. I still feel weird about it. Like, so if, yeah, if you're not comfortable, like being at the market, being like, Hey, we're here today. Like I get it. <laughs> Practice on a small scale. Right. Keep like the smaller stakes. Um, and it, it, it does get easier. And then eventually you'll be like, hey, I'm posting something with social and you're just going to do it. Yeah. I definitely did that. Like when I started to make like videos by myself and I was I was a little kind of like, I don't know how to present myself. And I was getting in my head about it. And then I said, you know, I'm going to be like my weirdest, quirkiest self. And so there was one day where one of my plants bloomed and I just like, I filmed myself running outside going like, oh my God, it bloomed. And then I'm like singing to my plants. I posted it and I got sales from that because people were like, I get it. I feel that same way when I see a flower that bloomed, like, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing too. I hear this so often from my clients too, where they're like, it's the weirdest things that people are like. <laughs> all of a sudden like buying from me that I posted and it's like for the most part I think it's it's the real things it's like those very real moments not those ultra curated moments you know those ultra curated moments can be saved for your like official marketing materials but yeah if it's like social media not everything has to be so perfect and so curated any other questions coming up I have a question yeah so I launched my business um in January of 2024. So it's very brand new. And what is your business? Have, um soap making. Okay. And so I I uh, make soap at, uh, at my house right now and uh, sell it in market. Um uh, it's going pretty good so far. I uh, cannot complain. Like my um my Instagram pages are taking off and um I am working on uh, my website and my logo. I uh, talk with uh, a friend of mine who worked with my uh, on a logo with me. Um, but uh, would you say like I ha like I should be hiring like photographer or like um, a designer for like launching my business? I think I think ultimately that's kind of sorry, strategist. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately it kind of comes. It's a it's. In, at the end of the day, it's a personal decision, right? Yeah. Um, I do know people that when they're launching, they go all in, they, you know, invest their money and they work with a brand designer and a strategist to help them really like figure out their messaging and their branding, like your logos and your, the copy on your website and everything like that. Right. I think that it's, it kind of depends on where you're feeling. I think a lot of people when they're first getting started, they use like they use templates, right? They'll use a templated website. They will create a logo in Canva, um, yes. you know, and and do it themselves. I don't want to advise that you that you shouldn't do it, um, but that that type of work is expensive. Um, so it really just depends on how much you want to invest at this stage. I think once you're really established and you're getting like, you know, bigger, more and more eyes on your brand, that might be a point where you're like, all right, it's time to level this up. That's personally what I did. Like my, my website was heinous to be clear. It was so ugly. Um, it was I, not, I remember, <laughs> I remember the website. It was heinous. The logo I designed myself, it was heinous, uh, but I was still getting business. I was fine, you know? So I think that it's like, it's not going to hurt you 
to work with a professional on that type of stuff. Um, I'm sure it will only help you, but how much yes. money are you willing to like sink in at the very beginning? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, and that, that, that was like a non-answer, but I've seen people do both. Yeah. If you told me I'm five years in, is it time that I hire like a professional brand designer and like have my website be redone? I'd be like, mm, possible. I don't know what your current website looks like, but like it's possible. Like if it's a five-year-old website that you DIY at the beginning, your me your message might change. That's something too. Like when you're in that first year, you might not actually know like who your target audience is or or who you want to work with. You also might, because some people think about this for like three years before that first year, right? right. Can't give a definitive answer on that, but a lot of times I've met a lot of business owners who they're like, yeah, when I first started, I thought this was my client or I thought this is what people wanted to hear. And then I realized it was actually this. And so I needed to change everything. Yeah, it makes sense. I, uh, yeah, I, I am uh, sort of going in certain directions and I hope like I stay in, we remain in those for now. So like, um, yeah, yeah, but I get it. And thank you so much. Of course, you're welcome. Thanks. We have a comment from Alina. She says, I have a highly rated tarot reading service that I want to grow faster. Videos are such a great way to convey my vibe. Love your advice. I can yeah. imagine like videos would be really good for H huge that. for that because that's such a personal connection. People are spending intimate time with you one on one. Yeah, absolutely. And like, for example, today I had a student come in and I have a lot of students that want to work with me for their school projects, like journalism projects or whatever. And today I had somebody come um, and, you know, record some B-roll, but a friend of mine came by and afterwards I recorded some past life readings with her. And I said, hey, do you mind if I record this so I could put it, you know, up online and now it's a matter of uh, it's not the first it's not the first um, time that I record stuff, but I never put it online. And I'm very happy with the way this was because I wasn't focused on what I look like because it was all about the cards and the hands shuffling and that kind of thing, which was, um, yeah, I was comfortable with that so much more than showing my face. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do think that that's a, also a helpful way to kind of get started is even if you are like so afraid to show your face, especially if you have a product, like showing something and maybe just doing voiceover, right? We're, like yeah. you can, there's a voiceover button right in CapCut. Once again, literally did it this morning. Um, Like while I was drinking my coffee, I was just like, come with me behind the scenes on our shoot yesterday. And I like did a little voiceover. I, my hair was like in a greasy, messy bun and I was still in my pajamas. <laughs> like now you guys are the only ones that know that though. <laughs> Paige, you know, I'm really glad that this this um, class and, and Kara, thank you so much for offering it um, that because right now I've been thinking, you know, it'd be kind of cool. Like when I'm out and about on the days that um, I don't have to be anywhere, like put on a T-shirt or carry with me like a tote with a QR code that says get red, for example, you know, and they can stop me right there. And like it, when they scan the the QR code, have a video that said, if you are reading this, you scanned my my bag or my shirt. And if you like tarot reading, stop me right now because I'm available. And I was wondering, do you think that's a good idea or do you think that's kind of. Oh, my God, I think uh, it's so fun and it's so low stakes. Like if it doesn't work, whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's so fun. If someone got a video of you, like they're like, I just scanned the back of this lady's shirt and then there's your face. Like they they were afraid to approach you, right? Because that's society. We don't just walk up to strangers for the most part. But now they get to meet you and they're getting the permission to approach you if they want to. Yeah. I think it's, oh, a, cool, it's a fun idea. Thank you. I'm glad you approve. <laughs> yeah, I think it's cool. Thanks. I love it. <laughs> Um, I have one question that is actually kind of based off of Christina's question. I know we only have a couple more minutes, um, but Christina is saying how product demos are a great way that she uses video. And even though people have, she has that information in her description, it's always worth demoing. And I also find like when it comes to products, people don't read, they don't take the time to read. So demo videos are always helpful. Do you have any like quick tips about how to, like set up your home so things are like visually appealing or like the lighting's right for like recording a video at home or like any tips about like setting up near a window or anything like that? 
Yeah, I was just clicking back in my show to show you 82% of people have been convinced by a product or service by watching a video. And I've also seen statistics where it's people are more likely to buy when they watch a video. Um, even if they're the text is there, it's the what people prefer, right? Um, they might read it, but in today's day and age, most people don't read. They want to watch content. They want to watch video. They want it to be fed to them and have it be, you know, releasing all the dopamine and be a delicious little story that they got to absorb. Um, <laughs> but in terms of creating your own content, yeah, um, I would say like when you're getting started and finding the right space to do it, if you are trying to record any audio, really making sure that it's quiet. Um, there are a lot of, uh, decent microphones that you can buy for not too expensive if you did want to go that route. But honestly, if you're filming something just on your phone for yourself, you really can just try to find a quiet space. Um, and in terms of lighting, I think like the biggest tip is to make sure that the brightest light source in your space is in front of you. Um, whether that's your face or your product, you're going to be better off. You, you might have this idea like, oh, I'm going to put like all of my teas in, on the windowsill in the window and, and get them. But then you might just really get something that's a little, a little blown out or, you know, you're not seeing the product as well because the window is so bright. Now, again, smartphones are getting smarter and smarter. So they do a better job of balancing those things, but, um, you're going to actually be better off if you, if you've put that window in front of what you're filming and not behind what you're filming, if that makes sense. I think natural light is the easiest thing to get started with um, when you want to to use your own, create your own content. Um, if you're filming even just your face and yourself, like I have a window right here, like standing in front of that window, like I've done it. I just turned this window and record, like you know, look beautiful. <laughs> so, the strongest light source in front of you is key. Quiet space is key. Um, and if you're in a space that's like echoey or something, um, I would, if you, even if it's just like recording a voiceover or something like that, um, like we just talked about, try to be in a space that has stuff in it. Um, so even like I've recorded some voiceovers for things like sitting on the floor of my living room because the couch will kind of absorb any of that echo. Um, so there, there's kind of like some tricks of the trade to, to make sure that you're in a, a quiet space. Um, yeah. And if you're filming outside, that's also something that can be really, really noisy. And so that's a case where I would say like, maybe invest in a little microphone if you can. Um, but again, AI is so good today that you can probably just click the enhance audio inside of Instagram and it'll fix it all up. So <laughs> my tips are getting dated. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so true. I mean, yeah, like it is amazing. Like every time I open a new app, like even today, I open Instagram. I'm like, why is this like this now? Oh, it, like, changed. <laughs> it changed. It <laughs> changed. <laughs> oh my god well thank you so much Paige for taking your time and sharing your expertise it is already at a one hour, one hour mark um as I said before we're going to be circulating this workshop to everyone so you can refer back to anything Paige's contact info is there but I'll also make sure Paige is cc'd on that email so if you guys want to just shoot her an email you can um and then just a heads up our next empower her workshop is next thursday and it is also a marketing workshop developing and implementing a marketing strategy and that's with bloom collective so if you haven't registered for that yet you can just go to our events page and register for that um but besides that i hope everyone got in like a really good kernels of information or started thinking about how they can use video differently in their business um and you gain some little inspiration from each other. And thank you so much, Paige. Thank you everyone for attending and for, again, giving me that external validation in the chat. Loving it. Thank you. I'm so glad it was helpful. <laughs> Sometimes these things feel like, I feel like a broken record and I'm like, is this even useful? So thank you. And please don't hesitate to like, shoot me a message. If you have any questions about anything, I'm happy to, to answer them for you. Awesome. Thank you. This was great. Thanks very much. Of course. Bye guys. Thank Bye. you. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks so much.